In today's show, I'm looking back at the 2020 NBA draft and redrafting the first round, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and you can, I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We have transitioned from off-season review shows. They're all done. 30 of them finished. The NBA finals are starting tomorrow. But what we're doing now is getting into draft mode. So we're going to do a 2020 redraft today, a 2019 redraft tomorrow, some Dynasty League stuff for the rest of this week, and then 2021 draft starts absolutely full steam ahead as of Monday. Today's show is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. At only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the Ultra Player of the Week coming up later in the episode. All right, so let's get to the episode. Let's talk about the 2020 NBA draft. At pick number one, this is a guy that I had at number one in all of my mock drafts. He's the player that won the Rookie of the Year. So at number one, the Minnesota Timberwolves select LaMelo Ball. I know they have D'Angelo Russell. Cool. I know Anthony Edwards scored a lot of points. That's fine. LaMelo Ball, to me, is the best player in this draft. He was the best player in this draft before the draft. He's the best player in this draft now. He's a better player than D'Angelo Russell already. And he was who I would take at number one. Very, very simple for me to make that pick, and we don't need to spend too much time litigating it. But at number two, there is a change in what I had pre-draft, and I don't think there's any surprise here. At number two, the Golden State Warriors will take Anthony Edwards. Maybe the fit is a little bit weird with Steph and with Wiggins and with Oubre for this coming season, although Oubre won't be there moving forward. And then when Clay comes back, but that doesn't matter, he's 19. These other guys are 30-plus, most of them. Um, and you just you put him into that smaller role and you let him develop. He won't have as big a numbers as he did for the Wolves this year playing for the Warriors, but that doesn't matter. Anthony Edwards is who I'll take there. I'm still not 100% convinced that he is a guaranteed star type player. The scoring um, that he, he produced and the improvement in efficiency and improvement in defense was massive this year. Whether that can be something that leads to winning and whether there can be other things that he does when teams are really focused in on him. I'm not sure 100%, but I am way, way higher on him now than what I was uh, in the pre-draft period. At number three, again, no real surprise, although I I was a little bit torn, I guess, on doing this pick at number three to Charlotte, and that is Tyrese Halliburton, who was clearly the third best rookie this year. I still worry about him as a lead ball handler, which he didn't have to be in Sacramento. But I guess theoretically, he wouldn't have to be that in Charlotte either with Devontae Graham around. He can play off of him. He can be a connector piece. He never gets the line. He shot the ball well, but you don't want him, I don't believe, as your number one lead point guard. And I think there are ways for Charlotte uh, in this scenario to avoid doing that. Um, Again, you just don't want to say, well, he is our point guard savior. And he is the guy that we we have to draft. Now, I just don't think he's that guy. But yeah, as a defender, pretty good. As a shooter, shot well. Low volume, low usage. And I'm not sure, as Obi just knocks the microphone, I'm not really sure that there's you know, massive, massive scope for that to change in huge amounts as we, as we move forward. It might, but I'm still taking Tyrese Halliburton at number three to the Charlotte Hornets. Number four. Now, this is where things starts to get really interesting. At number four, the Chicago Bulls, they selected Patrick Williams in the real draft. I thought he was fine in that area. I thought he showed some bits and pieces. He was very low usage um, through design and also through his own choice. He defended okay at times. I thought he was totally fine. But I'm going to take a guy that I thought defended at a higher level and showed a little bit more offensively as well towards the end of the year, and that's Isaac Okoro, who went number five in the NBA draft. I'm taking Isaac at number four here for those uh, those Chicago Bulls. All right, so that's our top four done. At number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Remember, they took Okoro in the real NBA draft. I'm going to go with my man, Onyeka Okongwu. I had him top three 
in the mock draft before the season. Now, I've gone more wing and guard heavy, which, again, it's probably a mistake of mine to have a Kongu that high in the uh, in the mock draft just because I think he's going to be really good. I think he's... I think he was clearly better than James Wiseman, and I think he is going to be better than James Wiseman. But just that value in centers is a little bit more diminished. Um, could easily make the argument for moving him down a couple of spots here, but I do think he does have that switchy ability, which negates some of the issues you have with drafting centers at times. I'm not sure he's ever going to become a shooter, but I'm taking him at number five there to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, it's the Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. So who's going to be our Player of the Week? I think I'm going to have to give it to the guy I just talked about, Anyeka Okongwu, because to see a rookie big man come out and play in the NBA Eastern Conference Finals and not be a liability, in fact, be a positive on many, many nights, it's got to be huge. And Hawks fans have to absolutely be impressed with what Okongwu did. And you feel confident about the future of the center position moving forward. And that's a lot of joy. It's a lot of happiness to bring to a team knowing that we've got Capella now. And then we've got a, a Kongwu who's going to be able to move in. And we can trade them for assets if need be. But we've got real stability in that center position. And after going to the conference finals, having that long-term stability is massive for Atlanta. And with Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories. That joy creates success. But enjoyment isn't the end game. It is the whole game. Michelob Ultra Player of the Week is on Yeka. A Kongwu. All right, at number six, the Atlanta Hawks had number six. They took a Kongwu in the real draft. And in this one, they are going with Patty Williams, who slid down from number four here. Again, I could have tossed him up to number five there as a, a solid wing defender who maybe can show an ability to shoot. He's not Kawhi. He's not going to develop into Kawhi. This is not the thing for guys who don't shoot well, but are solid defenders. They don't just all turn into Kawhi. That's not how it works. But getting just another wing to add to the Reddish and Hunter mix there, you let him some time to develop in Atlanta. Uh, obviously, now that we know that there's issues with Hunter's knee, we hope that's not an ongoing thing. And Reddish's uh, ankle slash Achilles, we hope they're not ongoing things, although it didn't appear to be as Reddish came back and played in those conference finals at a pretty high level, or at least in that last game. Uh, Williams is just a, a strong... You can't have enough wings. I think we'll, we'll leave it at that. You can't have enough wings and you can't have enough high upside swings on wings and we'll, we'll take Paddy Williams there. At number six, the next one is the only one who stayed the same. At number seven, I am taking Killian Hayes for the Pistons. Now, I had him much higher in the pre-draft process. I had him at number two. I really, really yeah, believed in him. I've obviously dropped him down there. I still believe he's going to be a good player, a very good player. And I think we saw that defensive ability already shine through. The passing ability already shine through. The shooting was really poor. I think there's going to be a big step forward for Hazy coming next season in terms of the shooting, but I have I've dropped him down a little bit based on some of the struggles. But you know, the struggles for an 18-year-old who was injured um, and, and showed me enough flashes that he still needs to be considered highly. And, and I would have, you know, I could have even looked at him at number six there uh, instead of Williams, or even up at number four uh, to the Bulls, which you know, maybe in hindsight you redo. If I redid a redo of the of the mock draft, uh, maybe I'd even slide him slide him up to number four. But Killian Hayes comes in at number seven. Number eight is the New York Knicks. No, that's not Carmelo Anthony. Cole Anthony, I've got going to the Knicks. I was very impressed with uh, Anthony this season. He was drafted at number 15 in the real draft by the Magic. I'm jumping him all the way up to number eight. Of course, the Knicks aren't going to be taking Obi Toppin in this position again. Um, I think they would have loved to have gotten their hands on Killian Hayes here, and I debated a Kyra Lewis in this spot as well. But Cole Anthony showed an ability to be a lead lead guard scorer type, which the Knicks desperately need. He showed some passing ability. Uh, and I just think you're getting that guard in there when they're running uh, you know, Alfred Payton and Frank Nilakina and even Emmanuel Quickly, who, who was good, but you know, not as good as I think some expect him to be. I think getting Cole in there is, uh, is, a, is a nice, solid win for the New York Knicks. At number nine, Tyrese Maxey takes a big jump up. He goes to the Wizards at number nine. You know, you know, I was pretty big on him heading into the draft. I wasn't this high, but I definitely would have taken him ahead of uh, pick number 21 where Philadelphia did. I thought he impressed in the playoffs, in the regular season when given opportunities. He can score, he can pass, I think he can defend all right. I think the shooting is going to be pretty good for Tyrese. So I've got him going at number nine and the run on point guards continues. That is three in a row. Let's make it four in a row at number 10 as the Phoenix Suns select Kyra Lewis Jr. Yes, they have Chris Paul. They have campaign. That's fine. You know, Chris Paul's not going to be around forever. Campaign may not be around either. So getting Lewis in, you're having him learn as, as, as a backup guard. You need backup guards. You need 48 strong minutes of point guard play. 
Lewis is super fast. I think he would work well with Devin Booker. And I'll take him. They're definitely not taking Jalen Smith at that spot. I'll tell you now. So Kyra Lewis goes at number 10 in this redraft. Number 11, the San Antonio Spurs. I'm going to take the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay. I am not confident in this next in these next you know, four or five picks, probably. Like I've got Bay here at number 11. I am not particularly high on his upside, meaning I look at what he did this year and go, it was pretty good. He was thrust into a role with Blake Griffin gone. He did what he needed to do, but I'm not really sure what he does next. Can he ever become a high usage offensive fulcrum? Probably not. Can he develop into a passer? Probably not. Can he be a self creator? Probably not. Can it be a high level defender? Probably not. Like that's my problem with Bay. It's like, look, he comes in on the wing, be a good three point shooter. Like check, done. He's done it. What happens next? The usage probably does start to go up. And he is a solid player for a team here that needs a three like the Spurs do. But I'm not sure that he's got you know, super, super high ups. I know there'll be plenty of people here who are screaming like, where is, why is he not ahead of Maxi or Anthony or Hayes? Oh, he definitely outperformed Hayes. Yeah, why? Yeah, why is he he not? Yeah, right up in the top five. I'd take him in the top five. It's not about well, what did you do this season? Because you got to look at opportunity, you got to look at scalability, you got to look at potential growth and all that sort of thing. And I'm just think that his potential growth is probably a little bit limited compared to those guys that I do have ahead of him in this one. And number twelve, the Sacramento Kings. They pull the trigger. Where are you now? James Blunty Blunt. Now James Blunt. And his Warriors, they couldn't get into the NBA Finals. Not James Blunt, James Wiseman, his NBA, his Golden State Warriors couldn't get into the playoffs. But our playoff coverage right across the Locked On Podcast Network is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And at 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, we can all enjoy the games a little bit more this season. Now, Wiseman has fallen here from pick number two all the way down to pick number 12. I think I had him at like five or six in my mock draft before the draft. In some of my mock drafts, I had him down as far as nine, and I've gone even further down to number 12. And to be honest, I'm not even sure he's worth pick number 12, but this team, Sacramento, they can do with a center prospect. I think he's better than Marvin Bagley, who they have there, who's potentially a center slash power forward. But Wiseman's so far off being able to contribute at a high level. Um, and Sacramento is far off being able to contribute at a high level as well, that they have some insurance, I guess, that they can start him when Rashawn Holmes leaves, probably going to be this offseason, and Wiseman could step into a larger role there. But I'm going to take the plunge on Wiseman at number 12. I'm not confident that it's going to work out, but that's the direction that I will go. At number 13, we're looking at Devin Vassell to the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, Vassell has fallen from number 11 to number 13 in this draft but not through anything that he did. I just think that in something we said before the draft, that this draft is very, very, I think, low on high-end all-star level players. LaMelo and Anthony Edwards probably. I'm not convinced Anthony Edwards is a guaranteed all-star, but they're probably my two all-star guys. And that's it, right? Everyone else is just... But there's a lot, and this is what we said at the time as well, a ton of rotation-type players. And you've got guys like Maxi and Anthony and Sadiq Bay who have all jumped ahead here of Vassell, mainly because they, they got a little bit of extra opportunity. I still think Vassell is going to be a really solid player. And I could make the argument that he goes at number eight or number seven here, or that he could even have a higher upside than Patrick Williams. I don't think that's an outrageous statement. But I'm going here at number 13 to the New Orleans Pelicans with Devin Vassell. And to round out my fake redraft lottery, at number 14, it is Elf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Ah, yes, the flaming galah, Isaiah Stewart, goes to Boston at number 14. I've had plenty of arguments with Pistons fans about this guy. Um, Because, you know, I say things that apparently are controversial when I say I don't think he's a franchise cornerstone center. I I just don't. Oh, yeah, but he's a part of the future. Sure, but if they got a chance to get a better center, he wouldn't be a part of the future. And that's what I mean by franchise cornerstones, right? He Can he be a solid, maybe top 20 NBA starting center? Yeah. Can he ever be a top five one? No, no chance. So I think taking him in this spot is probably the right area. A really solid center who can come in and be... You know, he was much better than I anticipated for sure. He can come in and be a really strong rebounder. He can defend all right. He showed an ability to, to start shooting a little bit also, which is encouraging. But I don't really see huge... Now, I... I is without a doubt, he was better than James Wiseman this season. There is no doubt about that. And yeah, taking him two spots behind Wiseman in this mock maybe seems a little bit, you know, 
Ridiculous. Maybe it, maybe you think it's ridiculous. Maybe you don't. There'll be people who are out there going, you can't take Wiseman at 12. He's still going to be top four. But there'll be people out there saying, Isaiah Stewart, you've got to take him ahead of Wiseman. And to be honest, I don't understand the Wiseman number four, but I do understand the Stewart ahead of Wiseman scenario. I just think that if Wiseman hits, maybe it's a 10% chance that the, the upside is way higher than if Stewart hits, which is maybe a 60% chance. So that's why I've got those two uh, in the positions that I do. And to round out the top 15, let's go to the Orlando Magic taking a point guard. This time it is a manual quickly. Now, quickly, I thought, was much better than his draft position would indicate. He shot the ball okay at times, got to the rim a lot. His overall field goal percentage was pretty rough. His ability to run an offense is very much in question. And my issue with quickly is he is a point guard-sized shooting guard which can lead to problems. Now, the thing with Orlando is they do have a shooting guard-sized point guard in Markel Fultz, so that does help a little bit. And quickly, his passing is not going to be that much of an issue, but his ability to generate his own shot and to create some offense is something that that team needs. I'm going to take quickly there at number 15, but I was debating between him at 15 and the guy that ended up going at 16, and that is Detroit selecting RJ Hampton. Now, Hampton... Didn't do a huge amount in Denver, but impressed me there. And then when he went to Orlando, really, really impressed me what he could do in that scenario. I don't know if he's a starter long-term in the league or if he's a sixth-man type, but he can handle a bit. He can shoot a bit. He can score. He can create his own shot. I thought he defended at a pretty decent level as well. So I'm going to take RJ Hampton at number 16 to the Pistons, given that their other first-round picks from the actual draft, Stewart and Bay, are already off the board. Guys, bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. The NBA finals are about to tip, and you can track all of that action at Bet Online. So get the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including the NBA playoffs, the Stanley Cup finals, Major League Baseball, and all of your UFC MMA action. So before that next tip, head to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Use our promo code Locked On, sign up today, and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all of the parts that you need. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when you use Rock Auto and that money, yeah, why would you choose to spend 30, 50, 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years and their prices are reliably low for every customer. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and in their how did you hear about us box, write locked on so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Number 17, let's go to the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they're going to select Jaden McDaniels, who did play fairly well from number 28 for Minnesota. Nice, switchy defensive wing. Showed some offensive ability, but really usage was pretty uh, limited. They have Darius Baisley. I'm not convinced he's an answer. Um, And McDaniels would compete for time there. He could play some three, some four, some small ball five. And that defensive ability, I think, It would fit in pretty well with Oklahoma City. So I'm going to take him there at number 17, his length and uh, switchiness, I think, uh, that Sam Presti would enjoy. At number 18, the Dallas Mavericks, they are not selecting uh, Josh Green. They are going to take Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain! As my terrible Bain voice. Uh, Bain showed that he can be a very good NBA shooting guard, a very good shooter on a team that needs shooters and needs guards to play next to Luka Doncic. Bain fits in, I think, perfectly. Yeah, for Dallas. I think an absolutely seamless fit to get him there. At number 19, the Pistons on the board again, and they are going to take Alexei Pokyshevsky. Now, I think Pokyshevsky could end up being one of the best seven players in this draft. He could also be you know, where he is now. And this is what I, I found this a tough one to position Pokyshevsky. And looking back at this redraft, I actually hate having him here because I still think that he can be better than Stewart, quickly, Hampton, McDaniels, Wiseman, yeah, Bay even. But... You know, how's my appetite for you know, that not working out? He flashed a lot. Seven-foot point guard who blocked shots. Didn't shoot well at all. Doesn't rebound well. Defensively still has some real horror moments. Um, and he's still you know, a guy that needs development. But yeah, I can't let him slide any further than this. Yeah, should I have gone with him at 17 to the Thunder? Probably. 
to the Pistons, maybe, but I think getting it some guard depth and scoring is important. Uh, over quickly to the Magic, maybe. Over Vassell to the Pelicans. I did have him there at one point and then dropped him back down. Really hard to position where I want Pokashevsky, so I ended up with him at 19. At number 20, big fall from this guy. And again, not really through any fault of his own. The Miami Heat select Denny Avdia of the Washington Wizards. Avdia started for the majority of the season, was in a role that absolutely did not suit what he can do. Just go stand in the corner, you bad three-point shooting wing, and don't touch the ball. That was Scott Brooks's idea of how to utilize him. And it didn't go particularly well. And then he suffered that fractured ankle to end the year. He should be right to begin next season, apparently. Um, I was never that high on Avdia anyway heading into the draft. His inability to shoot is a concern. He sort of does need the ball in his hands, which is not always going to be something that rookies are going to get or young guys are going to get or young guys that can't shoot are going to get. He's a good passer. He's a solid defender. And again, I could easily have him at number 10 in this redraft. And and getting a wing is important, but I think his offensive limitations are a concern. But this could easily bite me in the ass, having him at number 10. uh, Number 20, sorry. At number 21, Malachi Flynn goes to Philadelphia. I think Flynn showed that he can be an NBA rotation guard. I think he showed that he can be an NBA starting guard. And heading to Philadelphia, just getting someone there who can shoot, who can defend alongside Simmons, playing with Seth Curry. Um, This is obviously before they acquired George Hill. Uh, I think in my mock draft, this is where I had Flynn going anyway. And I think it makes a ton of sense to get him back in Philadelphia. At 22, big jump up from the second round. The Denver Nuggets, they go back to the well with Kenyon Martin Jr. Now, maybe I'm blinded by Martin's performance on a Rockets team that wasn't trying to win, but his ability as a 6'9 forward to play small ball center, to protect the rim, to defend, to show offensive ability, and to shoot was really, really key. Now, it might not work in most scenarios, but just getting him in there, this is before, again, we're looking at before Aaron Gordon joins the Nuggets. Getting him in there, in a you know before behind Paul Millsap and Jermichael Green type role, let him develop in two three years time. Maybe he can become that starting four that you need. So I think Kenyon deserved to jump up into the second round, or from the second round to the first round. I've got him going at twenty two here to Denver. At number twenty three, Obi Toppin goes to the Wolves. Big slide from number eight. I was debating pushing him out of the first round entirely, but in the end, I think the fit with him and Towns would work okay. Um, just go all in on offense. Um, he showed some flashes of athleticism topping this year, but I still am never was never going to be convinced that he was a lottery player, uh, especially not a top 10 player. His defense is still a problem. Uh, offensively, I'm not convinced it works in the NBA, but you know, I think we take the flyer on him here. And you can make an argument for him to go four or five spots higher than that if you want. Number 24, we're going with the cashier, Xavier Tillman, going to the Denver Nuggets. I thought Tillman as a second round player really exceeded that draft slot. So he heads to Denver to be a backup center where they were running guys like Hartenstein and JaVale McGee later in the season. And Tillman, I think, can come in, um, defend at a high level, can pass a little bit, show some shooting ability, play behind Jokic. And even if he is just a backup center for the whole rest of his career, I think he's totally fine in that role at number 24. And he, and he can be quite useful there. Number 25, the New York Knicks. They are selecting Aaron Neesmith. Neesmith went at 14 in the lottery to the Celtics. Uh, I didn't particularly like it at the time. I don't think that most people would have him going at 14 now. He showed flashes at times, for sure. Some of the shooting was interesting. He improved his defense. And that's use that's useful, for sure. Now, I could argue easily he should go ahead of Tillman, easily ahead of Toppin, easily ahead of KJ Martin, just because getting a three-point shooting defending wing is important. I could even say, shit, you know, based on what we saw, maybe he's more important than Avdia. I don't think he is, but I could argue that. But I, I, he's not, to me, one of the best 14 players in this draft class. Maybe he becomes that. But maybe he also just is destined to be a, a wing who plays limited minutes and hits a couple of threes a game. And I think that's possible as well. But New York needs shooting. Yeah, a replacement for a Reggie Bullock down the line here for Aaron Neesmith. 26, this guy was undrafted. But at number 26, I'm going to select Naji Marshall to Boston when the Pelicans needed him at the end of the season. He stepped up and I thought he was impressive. I thought he was impressive enough to be a a rotation player in the NBA, a guy that can defend on the wing, that can show a little bit of creation, that can shoot a little bit. I thought he was absolutely fine to take here. And again, just getting wings, getting wings who can defend is really important. 
And I think Boston would be very much yeah, in their right mind to take him at this spot. So Najee Marshall, undrafted, goes to number 26 here at Boston. And for those of you asking, O'Shea Brissett is not eligible for this draft class. Jay Sean Tate is not in this draft class. He was in the year before. So these guys who really stepped up at times during the year, especially Tate, you know, first, team all, first team all rookie, was not a draftable player in this uh, in this draft because he was from the 2019 draft. So when we do the 2019 redraft tomorrow, I reckon you'll see Jay Sean Tate appear in that one. Number 27, Zeke Naji goes to the Utah Jazz. Now, Naji went to the Nuggets in the real draft. I thought he showed some bits and pieces. Probably more as a four than a five, but some shooting was interesting. Some offensive play. I think he moved all right. He defended okay. Um, and just Utah getting in a, a, another big body so they don't have to draft Yudoka as a buke. You can play him behind favors. You can maybe play him next to Gobert. You can go a little bit bigger at the four in, in times if you need to. And I think it's I think it's probably the right pick there. At number 28, I'm going with Peyton Pritchard to Minnesota. This was the Jaden McDaniel selection. Pritchard, of course, was selected at 26 by the Celtics in the real draft. He started off absolutely on fire, Pritchard, and shooting the lights out, and that fell way off, and he couldn't maintain a rotation spot as the season went on. He was in, in and out of things. But I do think he can be at least a backup point guard. He is a bit older as a player, but a solid enough shooter who showed some ability to be a rotation guy. Just getting him in there, seeing what happens with Lamelo, D'Angelo Russell, how that all works. Yeah, would you need to play him straight away? Absolutely not, but just having some depth there is important. At number 29, the Raptors select the Salt Flake, Theo Maladon. Now, Maladon was a second-round player. He went at number 34 in the draft to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Here, he is jumping into the first round. He started the bulk of the season for the Thunder. He had moments. thought he passed all right. thought he defended okay. He shot absolutely horrendously. But basically, he just fits the Malachi Flynn role. There's, Flynn, uh, there's Freddie Van Vliet. There is Lowry ahead of him. There is Norman Powell at the beginning of the year. And he doesn't have to play very much, and they can just work him in slowly. And then the last selection of my NBA redraft is a guy that we didn't even see play in the NBA this season, and that is Leandro Balmaro goes to the Memphis Grizzlies. Balmaro was selected um, by the uh, Timberwolves. We don't know when he's coming over. But if we have a look at what he did in Europe this year, he played 13, only 13 minutes a night. He averaged five points, but one and a half assists, he half a steal. He shot 42% on threes, which is a big up from the 29% that he shot the year before. But he moved up from Barcelona's second team into Barcelona's first team, hence the lower minutes and, and lower impact. But shot the ball well. Hit his free throws at 84% as well. He's a, a nice passing defensive um, point guardy type wing player. I think that's the best way of describing him. And it just gets a bit of time to come across and then make an impact for Memphis. You may be taking on that Kyle Anderson-y type role in the end. So there you have it. That is the end of the mock draft. Let's go through it again from the start. Number one, LaMelo Ball to Minnesota. Two, Anthony Edwards to Golden State. Three, Tyrese Halliburton to Charlotte. Four, Isaac Okoro to Chicago. Five, Onyeka Okongwu to Cleveland. Six, Patrick Williams to Atlanta. Seven, Killian Hayes to Detroit. Eight, Cole Anthony to the Knicks. Nine, Tyrese Maxey to the Wizards. Ten, Kyra Lewis to the Suns. Eleven, Sadiq Bey to the Spurs. Twelve, James Wiseman to the Kings. Thirteen, Devin Vassell to the Pelicans. Fourteen, Isaiah Stewart to Boston. Fifteen, Emmanuel Quickly to Orlando. Sixteen, RJ Hampton to Detroit. 17, Jaden McDaniels to the Thunder. 18, Desmond Bain to Dallas. 19, Alexei Pokyshevsky to Detroit. 20, Denny Avdia to Miami. 21, Malachi Flynn to Philadelphia. 22, KJ Martin to Denver. 23, Obi Toppin to Minnesota. 24, Xavier Tillman to Denver. 25, Aaron Neesmith to the Knicks. 26, Najee Marshall to Boston. 27, Zeke Najee to the Jazz. 28, Peyton Pritchard to the Wolves. 29, Teo Maladon to Toronto. And number 30, Leandro Bomaro to the Memphis Grizzlies. That is the uh, the first round of my redraft. The guys that were drafted in the first round that missed out here, Yudoka Azabuke, who went to at 27 to the Jazz. Precious Achua, who went at 20 to the Heat. Josh Green, who went at 18 to the Mavs, and probably a bit harsh on Green there. Could have him in there pretty easily. And then Jalen Smith, who went at number 10 to the Suns. I've actually dropped him all the way out of the first round, which again, could be a little bit harsh. But again, I'm just devaluing those big men a little bit and Smith falls out of the first round, guys. Don't forget, follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the old Odyssey app, as well as on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up, 
subscribe down below, ring the notification bell, leave your comments, but also make sure that starting July 19th, you are listening to the Ultimate Mock Draft 2021, presented by Locked On and Odyssey, featuring analysis from the GOAT of NBA Mock Drafts, Chad Ford, and Odyssey NBA experts, Brian Scalabrini and former Phoenix Suns general manager, Ryan McDonough. Our Locked On NBA local experts will make selections and trades for your favorite basketball teams throughout this week-long special event. Search the Ultimate Mock Draft 2021 on the new Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. Odyssey is your audio home for all sports, podcasts, music, and news that matters to you. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.